So welcome to section 11.3. We're going to look at how to take a derivative when we have a, a product of, of two functions or a quotient of two functions. So we're, we're multiplying two functions or we're dividing two functions. And this will be our content up through uh, our first test. Before we do that, what I'd like to do is highlight a few things I want you to think about when we when you're doing 11.2. Uh, now 11.2 primarily is taking uh, derivatives of sums and pro, uh, sums or differences uh, and dealing with cost, revenue, and profit. So one of the, the tricky parts of this is keeping track of whether we are dealing with the cost function, the actual cost, or whether we are dealing with the marginal cost function, which is the cost of one more item being produced. Uh, so in those, you just, you have to read the questions carefully. Uh, sometimes they go back and forth on what they're asking. Uh, and remember revenue, there, there's a, a, some of us mix up revenue and profit. Profit is what's left in our pocket after we've paid the costs. Revenue is just the money that comes in. Then you have to subtract the cost. So it's always revenue minus the cost. I've seen that sometimes done backwards where the, you know, so we want to take the revenue as the money that comes in. The cost, we take that away. Now, usually the cost is first. I understand that. But the revenue is all the money that comes in from the sales. So typically we'll see things like, if we know the sale price and we what we're selling it for, we know how many we sold, we multiply that and that gives us our revenue. Profit is what's left over. So it's the revenue minus the cost. So watch those issues of which function you're dealing with, whether you're dealing with the marginal, the derivative, uh, because you're interested in that next item, that next unit, or do you want the total? Do you want the profit made from from uh, selling 500 units, that's the profit function, the original one, that's the P of X. If we want to know the profit we will make, say on the 501st product unit we sell, what we do is we get the derivative and we plug the 500 in here and it's telling us what that uh, profit would be on that, that last unit we sold. Okay, so there's those ones. Uh, and again, there's also the average cost function, which really doesn't involve calculus uh, because we're not taking a derivative, we're dividing by how many units. So the cost of producing 500 units divided by 500, or in this case, x. So c of x divided by x. So the cost function, that's the average cost function. Okay, and again, in class, we'll, we'll review some uh, of the homework problems. So let's uh, motivate this first by looking at uh, how would we get the derivative of, of these, looking at these as two functions. So we've got uh, x minus 2 as one function, 3x plus 5 as another. And as we go to look at these, uh, we, we realize we don't have a way, or we haven't yet found, uh, been given a way to find this derivative. But I remember from algebra, couldn't I just FOIL this out? So x times 3x gives us 3x squared. x times 5 gives us a plus 5x. And then negative 2 times 3. Let me uh, fix something here. There we go. And get my pen again. Let's see, where are we? And then two times a negative two times three x, that's going to give us a negative six x. And then negative two times five gives us a negative ten. Combine like terms, we have three x squared minus x minus 10. 
Let's take the derivative of this function. The 2 comes down multiplied by the 3, so the derivative, derivative of this is going to be 6x, 2 minus 1 is 1. With this minus x, we have the 1 coming down, so we're going to get minus 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, so this is x to the 0, which is also 1. 1 times 1 is 1, still the negative 1. And remember, the derivative of a constant is 0. So this is our derivative right here. What I want to do, though, is what if these two functions that we're multiplying, what if they were a little more complicated and it wasn't necessarily easy to multiply them out? Well, is there a way, we'll ask, is there a way that... I could get the derivative, or we could do this, get the derivative without actually multiplying out the two functions, because maybe that's going to be more complicated. We'll look at some, most of them, you'll say I, it's easier to do it, but we'll get to a place where we need to use that product rule. So this is building for the future as well. So uh, there is, and the textbook takes you using limits and shows you that this, that this is how we would have to go about doing it. Where I'm going to start out is I'm going to show you the formula for getting the derivative of, of a product of two functions. Um, and what we'll do is we'll call it the first function p of x, the second q of x. So p of x times q of x, uh, anything p times q. When you take the derivative, the way we're going to do it, just sort of like FOIL was a formula we, we sort of learned and we figured, you know, how do I multiply these two? Well, that's algebra. In calculus, the product rule is a similar thing. We, we don't just take the derivative of p times the derivative of q. That doesn't work. You could try it. This would be derivative of this one is 1. Derivative of, of the second one would be 3. 1 times 3, well, that's 3, that's, but that's not the derivative we came up with if we multiply out first and came here. So we know that 6x minus 1 is the correct derivative. How do we get that? Well we follow this formula. Derivative of the first one times the second one unchanged, the original form. Remember, see, there's no derivative here. Plus the original function, the original first one, nothing done to it, times the derivative of the second one. Okay. And so since we use uh, this process, what I like to do is um, separate it and, and kind of list our functions as separate. So we've got a p of x is, we're going to take this first function, x minus 2. And while I'm at it, I'll go ahead and find the derivative of that first function. Derivative of p of x. That's just going to be 1, right? There's a 1 power here. It comes down x to the 0. So the derivative of p of x is just 1. q of x the second function is 3x plus 5. What's the derivative of q of x? The derivative of this function is just going to be 3, right? 1 times 3 is 3. 1 minus 1 is 0. x to the 0 is 1. The derivative of 5 is 0 as well. So I've got all four pieces here. Now I can just follow this formula and put it all together. So what's the derivative of p? It's 1. That goes there. Times the original second function, original q, with nothing done to it. So it's 3x plus 5. And incidentally, it, it, you know, you may want to have these parentheses because if this wasn't 1, you know, we have to distribute. We distribute anyway, but um, Make sure you do that. Then you take the original p of x function, which is just x minus 2. We're going to write that down. And then we multiply it by the derivative of q. The derivative of q is 3. So we've got it down to this process where we, we're still just taking the derivative of sums and differences, like we did in uh, the first section of uh, chapter 11. 
but we've got this formula of how we organize it. And we'll see that actually ends up being the same process that we do when we take the derivative of, of two things being divided. It's just a slightly different, but it's similar, okay? So we distribute the one through, and in the beginning we have 3x plus 5. Again, this is the derivative now, but what we're going to want to do is check, is it really 6x minus 1? We distribute the 3, so we get a plus 3x, and then a 3 times negative 2 gives us negative 6. Combining like terms, 3x plus 3x is 6x, and then positive 5 minus 6 gives us negative 1. Notice the same derivative. So it works both ways. We may feel more confidence in uh, foiling it out and getting it because this is what we've been doing, but practicing taking the derivative with a, a product is going to be helpful for us because we're going to move forward. We're going to look at derivatives with uh, exponentials. We do look at with logarithms because we use logarithms in um, in finance all the time. Okay, so we're going to be needing this. Um, we're going to be needing this skill. So what I'll do now is uh, click here. We're going to clear off the screen. There we go. And then we're going to go to our next slide. And this is just from the textbook. Instead of P and Q, they're calling it F and G. So you see the formalized uh, formula here, uh, the derivative D of X of these two functions being multiplied. Derivative of the first times the second unchanged plus the first unchanged times the derivative of the second. So that's just something you're going to need to remember and and you'll do it if you'll write it down each time you do uh, a problem. Okay. So let's look at an example. And this one looks okay. Yeah, I could do FOIL. It wouldn't be too bad. But let's see how this works without FOIL. So one more example to work through together. We have two functions. And maybe we'll do this one with uh, two different colors. So we'll take the first function, uh, we'll call that, we'll, call, we'll use f and g this time. Call f of x is 2x squared plus x. And so the derivative of that first function is going to be 2 times 2 is 4. 2 minus 1 is 1, so that's just 1x. And then the derivative of x, the 1 comes down, so that's going to give us a plus 1, x to the 0, which is 1. Okay. g of x, the second function, is going to be x minus x squared. So the derivative of g of x is 1 derivative of x is just 1 minus the 2 comes down, 2x, 1 minus 2x. Okay, and now remember the formula, and the best way to remember this formula is to write it, and so, and maybe you don't put the, F, the x's. I, it's a little bit easier if we take away all the baggage, as I'll call it. So f times g, what's that going to be? It's going to be the derivative of the first one, derivative of f times g with nothing done to it, plus uh, the first one, f, times the derivative of g. Okay, so just kind of simplify our notation a little bit. What's the derivative of the first one? Well, that's the 4x plus 1. Sorry, I, I didn't use color like I said I was going to, but um, we might look at that. So there's the first one times the second one with nothing done to it. So that's this part over here, x minus x squared. Then we add the second part of this, which is taking the first function with nothing done to it, 2x squared plus 1.
uh, of plus x, not plus y. First one with nothing done to it, okay? Times the derivative of the second, which is going to be 1 minus 2x. Now, in the homework, when they have you do these, they say you don't have to take the final answer and multiply it out. And that makes sense because, look, we have, we've got two FOIL problems. Why didn't we just do FOIL in the beginning and get our answer directly? And I, I'll agree with you. That's probably an easier way to get it all out there. We need to, though, go through this so we get comfortable with this process. Again, because we will soon be working with functions that are multiplied that this isn't going to work. We have also got one more rule that we haven't learned yet, um, but once we learn it, we'll see this product rule also needs to be it needs to be in here as we work through everything we're doing. Okay, so we're going to leave the answer. This is the derivative, and for the homework, they say don't multiply it out. So why go through extra work when they don't want us to? Okay, so this would be our final answer. And I want you to see those pieces, right? Derivative of f, g unchanged. f unchanged, derivative of the g. Okay, so all those pieces just come together. You do this a few times, it will become second nature. Okay, so this helps us with the, the second part of this lesson today, and then we're, we're done, is a similar approach um, to taking the derivative of a quotient. Oh, I forgot to hide it. Well, you, there's there's this formula, and you kind of see, um, if we use p and q, p is the top, q is the bottom, numerator, denominator, derivative of the first times the second unchanged. The difference, though, is since we're subtracting, uh, remember when we did, uh, like, exponents, when you multiply, you add the exponents. When you divide, you subtract. So just remember that one. When we're dividing, we have a subtract between the two. And then again, it's the first one unchanged times the second, the, the bottom one. I mean, it's, not, it's not really first and second, but uh, the, new, the denominator derivative. And then there's this part here, and we'll kind of see it just has to happen. It has to be here. It's the denominator squared. And it does come, if you think of this, this was to the minus power. Remember when we had 1 over x, um, and you took that, that would be x to the minus 1. So you take its derivative, and you, we, you know, it really does come from that. So I did backwards. So where we'll start, though, is we'll start with this one to motivate to see that that's what's going to work. Now, another way we could actually do the division because it's very simple down here. It's just an x. We could divide into both of these, right? So this is x to the third over x minus 2x squared over x. We could simplify with algebra. So this first term now is just x squared, and the second term is just minus 2x. When we take this derivative, which is what we're going to want to match to, we get 2x to the first power minus 2. So we want to kind of note this one in a nice little box. This is what we need to end up with. So we're going to check to make sure that this formula gives us that same thing. Again, in, in the homework, uh, which we'll do, we'll do one example, um, they allow us to, to not have to divide it out or do all that stuff, but we're, we're going to go ahead and do that here just to make sure we match up with this. Okay, so what we're going to do is p of x over q of x, so p of x is x cubed minus 2x. x 2x squared. Okay. I'm also going to need the derivative of that top of the numerator. So um, I didn't give myself quite enough room, so I'll put it down here. I take its derivative 3 and then subtract 1 from the exponent, so that's 3x squared. This, the 2 comes down, so I'm going to get a minus 4 and subtract 1 from the exponent, so the 2 minus 1 is 1. 
So there's the numerator, there's the derivative of the numerator. Here's the denominator, q of x. And in this case, we have something very simple, just x. And so its derivative, the derivative of q of x, is just going to be 1. Okay. So now let's put these pieces together. So the derivative of p, which is here, 3x squared minus 4x, put parentheses around it, times q of x, which is the original over here, so that's x, minus p of x, uh, and again, this is the original p of x, so it's x cubed minus 2x, times the derivative of q of x, which is 1. So that's our four pieces. So always, you know, break it down into the four pieces, put them there. But we're not quite done yet. This is all divided by the original Q squared. The original Q is X. So we square this whole thing. Uh, and I'll put some parentheses around just to emphasize. We're going to go ahead. I mean, if this was in the homework, they would say, just leave it like that. Enter that and you're done. But... I'm doing this to motivate us into understanding that this is the correct way to get the derivative. So what we want to do is we're going to simplify it so that it matches with the 2x minus 2. Again, yes, in this case, this was a much easier way to do it, but we're going to get problems where we cannot easily divide them. So we need to be able to use this quotient rule. So let's see, where are we now? So let's... Uh, distribute so the x gets distributed through we get 3x to the third now remember this is a derivative we're not going to take a, a derivative again the derivative has been taken uh, minus 4x squared the second part the negative will distribute through so this be and the one comes through too so um, one times everything that's easy to do uh, that nothing changed so we get a negative x cubed, and we get a positive 2x squared. Again, everything over x squared. Let's combine some like terms. So we've got a 3x cubed and a minus x cubed. So those combine and become 2x to the third. And I'm going to come over here a little bit. 2x to the third, combining like terms, negative 4 and a positive 2, both are x squared, so we're going to end up with a negative 2x squared all over x squared. And now I distribute the division to both of these and reduce, so 3x squared divided by uh, x cubed divided by x squared, that's going to give me 2x in the front, the front term, minus x squared divided by x squared is 1, so just minus 2. Notice it's the same thing that I started with up here, or, or that I ended up with up here. So the derivatives are the same. Um, this works. Okay, we'll do it that way. Take a look at the textbook. They use limits and develop this. Again, it does take a lot long. It takes a whole page and uh, a more algebra, but you'll see it works. Um, and, and take a review of that. What I want you to do is, is get practicing using it and, and doing it right. So that, you know, again, we've got two things, either multiplied or divide. We've got two different formulas, one for product, one for quotient, one for multiplication, one for division. Um, you'll learn the rules if you kind of write it down each time as you do them. So, I know it takes a little extra time, but uh, it's worth it. And it's to me, that's how I remember better is if I just get my uh, in the process of writing something multiple times. Write it down, write it down. So again, here's the formal from the textbook. Uh, numerator over denominator, derivative of the numerator times the denominator unchanged minus the numerator unchanged times the derivative of the denominator 
all divided by the denominator squared, the original denominator squared. That's the quotient rule. It works. And it's you, so if we're, if we're going to do it with uh, some division, we've got to we got to do it that way. Uh, let's see what's next. So just like the last one, let's take a look at an example. And this one definitely um, I, trying to divide that. I don't. I don't even want to try. So uh, sure, you could probably use um, what do they call a? There's some techniques for doing the division, but. Um, anyway, I don't know that it would make it any easier to take the derivative than over here. So what's what's y prime? Well, it's again we've got a top. So you know maybe maybe we use a little bit different notation here. Uh, we could use f and g, I guess. You know we could say y is equal to f over g. Sure. And so when we take the derivative of y. We're really taking the derivative of f over g, which we're going to get the derivative of f times g unchanged minus f unchanged times derivative of g, all divided by g squared. Okay. It's various ways to, to remember it, but if you'll if you'll just get in the practice of writing it and trying to do it from memory and then you know, it, it'll it'll stick. It really will, because it's very similar to the product rule. So what is f and what is g? Well, f, we'll put the notation f of x, the numerator, is square root of x minus eight. Again, I'm going to write it as x to the one half minus eight, because I that's going to make it easier to take its derivative, which we're going to need. Derivative of f of x. So the one half comes down, and again, after you do this, you'll get used to doing these. And remember, we subtract one, which we're subtracting two over two. So we end up with a negative one half, and the derivative of eight is zero. So that's that's what that derivative is. G of x, similar type thing. We're going to rewrite it as x to the one half plus eight. Not too much difference. So when we take the derivative of this, we get the one half that comes down in front, one half times one, right? Um, x subtracting two over two, subtracting one from that, uh, we get also a negative one half. Okay, and the derivative of eight is zero, so that's that's all there is. Now we just put it into this formula, and we enter it in. We we actually don't have to simplify it any further. So we're going to say. The derivative of y is the top, the derivative of the top, and you could do one half, or I guess you could probably put in 0.5. Um, x to the minus one half. And in the homework, they don't say that you have to use positive exponents, so let's not, I guess. So that goes there times what? Times g unchanged. And so since for g, let's go ahead and use a square root, a little bit easier. Maybe you could use a one half power. It should take it either way. Okay, so that's the first part. And then we're going to subtract the function f unchanged. Okay, so f is square root of x minus 8. Okay, I could have got it here. Nothing happened to it. Times g. So that's one half x to the minus one half. And don't forget when we're dividing we also have to divide by what? The original denominator all squared. Okay, so that's the formula. And that's what you put in. You're supposed to take it. Let me know if you have any problems with that. But that's 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 the derivative. Okay. Uh, I'm going to look at one more example, and this is going to, uh, I'm not going to go all the way through this. This is actually one of the homework examples. Come back. No, go there. There we go. Uh, 
what I want you to do is I want you to see that what they're going to have you do is, okay, they give you monthly sales. So they give you the quantity of units. This is how many units we sell for some function. Um, and given by where T is um, M months after its introduction, T months after or T months after its introduction. So, you know, you, you can tell by which month how much you're going to sell. The price also changes by month because, you know, I guess that longer something's out there, maybe the price will drop. Um, so they've got a, a function for that. You're going to find the derivative of the first one, right? So here's a, so notice this is really the set, same setup we've been doing. Um, let's just go three. So we've got our first function here, the original function, uh, and we, we're going to find its derivative. We'll put it here. We've got a second function here. We're going to find its derivative here. And then what we want is find the rate of change of monthly revenue. Well, revenue is quantity times price or price times quantity, whichever way you want to do it. But since they give us Q first, we'll go with Q of T times P of T. So we see all these business applications uh, involving either sums and differences or products. And this is going to give us the revenue function quantity times price. That's how much money we have coming in. And again, this one's specifically after five months. So we will use, um, so it wants the rate of change. That's a derivative. Just remember for the derivative, you're going to take the derivative of the first one times the second one unchanged, right? And then you're going to add the first one times the derivative of the second one. Okay, so that's that's that. And then you can make the statement here. So I'll give you, I'll let you do that. Um, apologize for making this so late, but uh, this is what you need to get started. And then in class, we'll go over some problems together and um, make sure that this is nice and clear.